Hi guys, it's Harley from Vape Mill and today we're doing the Revolver Vandy Vapes RTA. First of all, I'd like to say I love Vandy Vapes. Their Kaylin, the original dual coiling, is my favourite RTA of all time. Uh, my missus uses it at the minute and every time I use it on hers, no matter what flavour she's got, you know, I'm amazed by the flavour, the airflow, and it's just perfect. However, the revolver. First of all, when I opened it, I was really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. I thought I would get everything from it. But to be honest with you, I'm a bit disappointed. I am, and there's been a lot of pressure on this. The reason I was asked to review it is because there's up and down reviews. Some people say it's great, some people say it's bad. Uh, and they said, Arlie, come on, review it, tell me what you think. Let, let, let's see how good it is. Um, first of all, I'd like to point out that I've never had that much of a good relationship with single coil RTAs. Um, I've got no right relationship with single coil RTAs, uh, dual RTAs, but single coil RTAs, are, for some reason, I don't know if it's just my preference or whether it's the manufacturers that can't quite get it there. But hey, -oh. so let's start looking at it. We've got 4.5 centimetre tall. I've currently got the bubble glass, but it doesn't come with a bubble glass in the UK, obvious reasons. So it's 2mm, I think outside of the UK it's 3mm. Bubble glass makes it 5 I believe. Let's go straight on to a bit of controversy, if I can open it. Bear with me. Right, got it open. If you've watched the wicking tutorial, and I don't know if you can see now, underneath the coil it has got changeable airflow internally. Let me get my screwdriver. I don't know if you can see but underneath the coil, or if you watch the wicking tutorial, there's a changeable airflow inside. I did point it out on the wicking bill at uh, wicking, but there is a screw here, flatted screw, which turns it. Let's see if you can see. So what you've got there is you've got a single uh, you've got 3 by 4 holes, so 12 holes. Alternatively, you've got a dual or triple huge holes. More like slashes. Something that I'm not very keen on with this is the clamp. Now, there's no actual ridges to hold the coil onto the right bit of the clamp, so it quite easily falls in. Um, now, if you watch the wiki tutorial, I actually bent the legs out to make sure it went through there, which made it a bit easier to wick. Most of the wick I've struggled with flavour on it. And then I've realised if you wick it, if you build the coil slightly higher than you expect it to be built, because I, I, I was leaving it two or three mil up, then I've pushed it up another mil or two and I'm getting more flavour from it. Uh, about the airflow, I use it on three to four. The reason that's quite controversial, a lot of people are saying it's rubbish because you have to take the cap off to get to the screw. So as you can see the cap, the glass comes down to here. The cap covers, and you, you can't quite get to the screw unless you take it off. Well, I, I kind of think, well, to be fair, you, you build your coil, you choose the internal airflow, and then you've always got your out, external airflow, which is quite sizable. That's what you change while you're vaping. So, so I'm, I, I don't think, think that's a problem. Uh, there's a lot of talk whether it's a gimmick or not. Uh, someone, someone else said it's failed innovation. I don't, I don't think it's failed. I don't think innovation can fail. It'll either work or it won't. I suppose technically that's not innovation if it doesn't work. But I'll we'll always strive to innovate and I don't think it's necessarily failed. I think it's a good call. Maybe it doesn't change all that much. They, they could have changed it a bit more rather than... Yeah, you know I mean, they could have made it a lot more reduced or they could have separated it more so it comes up. Or they, they could have been a little bit more creative with it. But I'm not against it at all. As you can see, we've got the rainbow. Which I'm not always struck on the rainbow colours, but for this I think it works quite well and that's why I chose it. It also comes in black, silver and gold. It uses an 810 drip tip and a 510 atomizer screw. Um, something I didn't realise straight away, it took me till this weekend to realise it actually. On the drip tip, I doubt you'll be able to see on my weak camera, there's rims. Which don't get me wrong, I like to say I didn't notice until this weekend. But... I think I like it, because instead of it being smooth, you can't, like I said, you can't feel the rims on your lip, but it does add a little bit of grip, and it's more than just a, oh, there you go, there's a drip tip, we've chucked it out for you. Going back to the build, I forgot to mention, 
Another thing I often found, especially if I was using a flatted screw, the clamp quite often twists. Not, I've, I've never had it fully come out, but it, as well as little rivets to make sure the clamp's in the right, uh, the coil legs in the right place, it'd also be nice to have little rivets on either side of the clamp to make sure that can spin around. Um, like I said, I didn't actually have that much problem with it, but I, I think it's plastic and you've got a big chance of that slowly breaking. And if you're looking for a decent RTA, surely you want one that's reliable. And that's going to stand the test of time. That's all my notes done. And I know, I know it's a quick, probably not very in-depth review. But I haven't really got much to say about it. There is people online, and there's people that's been messaging me, two or three people, that are, dude, this has got some really good reviews. You're telling me I ain't got any flavour. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I, I've, been, I've been rebuilding for probably six years. And I've never had... There's only one of RTA, here, which I'm not going to mention. There's only one of RTA here that I've never been able to get flavour out of. This I can get flavour out of, but all the other reviews are telling me it's got really good flavour. And I'm sorry guys, I'm not calling you liars, but I am struggling. And I, I, I've, I've reached out, there was some guy on Reddit, I said, dude, your saying it's got really good flavour. What coil did you use? And he said, I can't quite remember, but it'll be 3mm in diameter, blah, blah, blah. And I've adapted, I think I've built it 6, 7, maybe 8 times. Yeah, probably 8. And, and I can't get that much. I'm getting flavour out of it. I am getting it. For, but f from what I saw and from what I wanted, it's not quite up to my standard, I'm afraid, guys. And I'm sorry if that offends one or two of you, but I'm trying to be as honest as I can. And like I said, I'm not calling up the other reviewers liars. What I am saying is they probably did something different or, or whatnot, but in my, it's my job to come in and tell you what I think of it. And what I think of it at the minute is it's, it's not my favourite. Would I suggest you buy it? Depending on the price. I, I'd probably buy it for 15, maybe 20 quid. Just add to the shelf and use it every now and again. What about 30 quid as, as an all day RTA? Definitely not. For all you haters of the internal airflow adjustment, I like it, I do. It's, it's a good adaption and I'd be quite happy to buy another RTA or RDA with it on. Because it's something extra, it gives you that little bit more control. The current, every other RTA I've ever had, because this is the airflow stick with it, and sometimes it ruins it. With this, I suppose you could say it's a bit cowardly with kind of, oh, we don't know what to do, so just be it, you choose. But at the same point, I think it gives you a bit more range. Sometimes you could do it a little bit less or a little bit more. Um, there you go, guys. Sorry, it's, it's, it's a bit loose, I know. But. I'm just trying, I wanted to like it, and I do like it a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I certainly, if, if, I were, if I weren't getting it away, I still wouldn't use it again, it'd go on the cupboard, on the shelf, sorry, and uh, never get used again. Sorry guys, the winner of this week's raffle for the drag nanopod is Emma Gartrell. Congratulations Emma, I will me uh, comment on your comment. Thank, uh, contact me for postage details. Next week's giveaway, guys, and this week's review is going to be on either the Meshman 228 Watt mod or the E-Leaf iStick rim kit. Uh, there is currently a poll on our Facebook, so you can decide. You've only got till 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, though, our time to decide. So quickly get on Facebook, let us know which one you want us to review, and then we'll probably do the other one the week after anyway. Thanks guys, stay cloudy.